The rules of war have changed in Iraq right now. The best estimates suggest that, along with 140,000 or so U.S. soldiers, there are 70,000 heavily armed private security personnel. Private military companies are certainly nothing new in the past. Mercenaries and soldiers of fortune have played a role in conflicts all around the globe. But with Iraq, the scale of their impact has changed. A fascinating documentary, Shadow Company, takes a look inside this world. We'll talk to the filmmaker in just a moment, but first, here's a clip. In brief, for those of you who don't already know, I quit the job at the law firm, and I'm now working for a private security company in Iraq. I'm on a six on, three off rotation. Six weeks on, three weeks off. The contract is huge. 200 men doing close protection tasks, or PSD, as the Americans call it. There are swarms of other firms of private contractors all over the place, some complete cowboy outfits. But this one is fairly sharp, so I'm not too worried about getting killed. Nick Michinich, fascinating film, and uh, the news is carried today that uh, another contractor was killed today by a rocket attack. More than 700 have been killed over the course of the war. It's a dangerous job. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very dangerous job, and it's the kind of job that carries quite high rewards, but with those high rewards, unfortunately, come high risks as well. You uh, really have an interesting backstory about what it took to basically gain the confidence of people that kind of tend to prefer to work in the shadows. Can you tell me how you cultivated the relationships? Yeah, the thing, you know, the thing when you're doing a subject like, when you're touching a politically sensitive subject like we did with Shadow Company and when you're dealing with guys who are basically ex-Special Forces operatives that are probably more used to avoiding talking to anyone, not just the media, but anybody else who they might be dealing with because missions are often of a sensitive nature, it's quite tough to get them to open up in the way in which we wanted to for them to tell us a real honest story for the documentary. So. It often took, for the sake of argument, I would meet a guy in Sierra Leone and I would spend two weeks with him, but uh, the interview was conducted on, the, on maybe the very last day or the day before the last day because I couldn't just waltz in there, point the camera at him and say, okay, here we go, thank you very much. You know, we could have done that. We would have gotten some kind of a response. We wouldn't have gotten the kind of, you know, uh, really intimate portrayals that you see of these guys, these, these modern-day mercenaries that you see in the movie. So that was why we decided to do it in a... In a more sort of careful and sensitive way. And I gather that uh, the reviews of your film from people that find themselves on the left and on the right of the political spectrum have both thought, said that you, you really did a good job of being fair and just representing the reality of what's going on over there. Uh, well, he here's the thing, you know, sorry, no, did oh, you finish go ahead. the question? Barry? Go ahead. No, the, well, the thing is, usually, you know, there's, as, as many of the viewers of your show would know, there's a number of different kinds of documentaries that have been out in the last couple of years that deal with political, political subjects. But more often than not, political documentaries end up being propaganda. You know, you end up with a film where the, the final conclusion is almost preordained. So you go into this movie and you, and you kind of go, okay, what am I seeing here? I'm seeing, I'm seeing a left-wing point of view and all the evidence that's presented is essentially hammered in in order to reinforce a certain point of view, almost as though the audience doesn't have any intelligence of its own. So what we wanted to do, we set out to do this from the beginning, is we wanted to make a film that encourages the audience to ask the right questions rather than gives them really simple answers because there are no simple answers in modern warfare and as, as I've often stated before, truth has a nasty habit of not taking political sides. So you're right, a number of people on the left and right at the highest level of, of, uh, of Washington DC have stated a strong preference for the way in which the film treats the subject because it's quite rare that a politically balanced documentary would be made about such a touchy, as touchy a subject as private warfare. You also show a wide range of people, the people that, you know, I think, gee, I'd really like to have that guy in my corner in a tough fight. But also in the DVD, in the extras section, you have this astonishing story of this guy that uh, they tell the story about this guy who was uh, a special forces kind of guy. And one day he brings home his new wife, which is an inflatable party doll. Could you? Yeah, there's a, the, there's a story about a blow-up doll, which is, which in, if you want to see that, you'll have to get the DVD, because it is, as you say, Barry, one of the extras. Uh, the story is told by a guy by the name of Cobus Klassens, who was part of a private military company called Executive Outcomes. They operated in Sierra Leone in 1995 and again in 99. 
as it happens, um, there's a lot of very fascinating, often absurd stories that come out of conflict zones. You know, not just not just the private military kind, but also the regular military. I mean, there's a lot of absurd stories you could probably discover if you talk to regular soldiers that are stationed in Iraq right now. But the funny thing with Cobus and Sierra Leone is that uh, Cobus is an ex-South African uh, of army officer who worked for a private military company and who ultimately ended up getting involved in various aspects of the diamond trade and uh, eventually stopped working as a private security contractor. And he is now working in various other jobs in West Africa. But what's interesting about the story of Sierra Leone is Edward Zwick, who is the director of uh, many notable Hollywood movies, most recently Blood Diamond, uh, took a great liking to Shadow Company and actually um, ended up uh, inviting me out to Mozambique to, to check out the filming of Blood Diamonds, which, which was great. And I brought Colbus along to that. And it was really interesting to see because Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Leo, Leo saw the movie and quite liked it, saw Shadow Company. Leonardo DiCaprio's character has many similarities uh, to, to basically Colbus's real life. So I thought it was cool to get, to get endorsement, not just at the highest level of Washington, D.C. for the film, but also at very high levels of Hollywood. So we'll see exactly how far that can take us. Nick Michinich, fascinating film. I recommend it highly to people that are interested in documentaries and uh, the extras on the DVD. Some incredible stories. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Barry. www.shadowcompany.com if you guys want to check out the DVD or the trailer. There's lots of extra clips on there as well. Thanks, Nick. Up next on Backstage, Thanks. Macy Gray has found a new groove. Much more on her...